Yo, what's up? Welcome to Bag Chat. We got some gladiators <laughs> on the show. We got Space and Mirror. Okay. You know, Space was just telling us that there, uh, there was some potential of rotating extra people around, but Moth had too big of an ego. Kev's to w refused to respond in more than one single word. And so we ended up with you two. Is that, is that the way it always goes with the PR? Yeah, for the that, gladiators? that's how it goes. <laughs> I, try and get, I try and get new people, but then it always just comes down to being Mirror, so... Yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah. it must it must be must be heavy being the most charismatic players on the team. Oh, <laughs> I, well, what a what a brutal situation to be in. <laughs> uh, thanks for coming on the show, guys. I appreciate it very much as well. Uh, Mirrors sat with streaming players net all over him, right? So if you hear some, if you're if you're watching this and you hear some screams, who is streaming? Is it like Kevster streaming right next to you or something? No, it's, it's Muse. Muse right now. Yeah, it's only Muse. Yeah, okay. is Muse stream. loud? It's Muse loud yeah, when he streams. He, he gets yeah, loud, sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> um, I wanted to I wanted to just kick this off as well by just asking what what you're up to this week because unfortunately you're not off to Hawaii. It was a very close game to almost get in. I hate to bring up the the bad news again, but uh, it's what what does <laughs> what what does this break mean for you lot? Like what with with the Countdown Cup coming up and you've got Hero Pools coming into it as well. What does practice actually even look like at this point in the season? Oh, uh, right now we definitely get a week off for sure because those guys have to finish playing the tournament. So there's just a one flat week off uh, until we get the hero pools. But for me personally, I'm probably just trying to take this whole time off and like stay away from the computer just so I can make sure that I feel like fully refreshed when the season actually starts back up again because we have like one one month left. So we're really going to want to give our all into that that one month. Uh, I know Mir is probably, he has two PCs, so he's probably playing from home and kind of just chilling like, uh, on the uh, regular off that. But Is that the plan? Uh, but yeah, I mean, I'm just trying to take my time uh, and stay fresh for the last part of the season because this is the part that really counts, you know? Yeah, yeah. It, it's the part that counts, but it's also you've been grinding for like half a season now as well. So the matches get to you, the practice get to you. Uh, Mirror, someone as you who play a very mechanically demanding role, how do you like juggle that, like resting so you make sure you're like you're motivated, don't get burned out, but also being like one of the best mechanically skilled players in the world? Do you have to force yourself to take breaks or do you just keep grinding and don't think about it? Oh, I just play whenever I feel like to. <laughs> just, okay. just whenever you yeah. feel like it? If I yeah, wake yeah. up if I wake up normal and I wake up happy, then I'll play. If I wake up annoyed, <laughs> then I'll, I just don't touch the game. Okay. Does yeah. it ever is swing that... too far in one direction? They're like, oh, like I've been practicing so hard these past two weeks, or like, does it, or you're like, oh, you know, I haven't been practicing as much this week, so like you change it up, or is it just entirely just like natural? It's just natural. Yeah. Okay. It's genetics. You can't teach this stuff over here. <laughs> yeah. I would have thought that a lot of people would have like a, a very conscious thing about it because, like, what would happen if you just woke up just pissed off like seven days in a row or whatever? Yeah. But I, I assume that that just doesn't happen. You just enjoy playing the game yep. most of the time. The game's pretty fun. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> I mean, it is right now. It's pretty damn open. Um, uh, the, the, um, this week off as well do you do you like doing the same thing as space where you try and take a week and take a break like reset the mental or like like you're saying are you just gonna continue playing if you feel like playing it's very up in the air i'll probably play some game later tonight and for different games and just relax yeah because yeah. we're not screaming so there's no point of forcing it because there's who going to be hero pool as well sure sure yeah is that something that you just figured out over many seasons space that you need to take those kind of breaks? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm kind of just the type where I feel like if I do the same thing over and over again, I'll, I'll lose my mind, you know what I mean? So I've yep. always just been the one to kind of try and balance it. Like, uh, when I get breaks like this, usually I would want to go somewhere, like, but we can't really travel because of restrictions and we right. don't want to, you know, make it so that we can't play together. Um, so... I'm just kind of here and trying to spend as much time off the computer as possible. Uh, you know, hit the gym and just do other stuff. I have like a lot of family over here too that I hang out with. But I think we should try and we'll probably try and do something as a whole as a team. You know, just to get out uh, oh. together. So where, these guys kind of take time off the computer. Where would you go? Like, okay, if you could go anywhere to like take a break off, you know, a week off. Uh, you know, COVID doesn't happen. Just yeah. like uh, everything besides from Overwatch. Like, what would you do? Like, where would you go? Joshua uh, Tree or like a different <laughs> city or like what, yeah. where are you going? Oh, uh, I mean, I probably want to go to Vegas right now. Okay, Vegas. Uh, yeah, I have a 
there's about to be some wild stuff going on <laughs> in Vegas. <laughs> but you know, I, I can't get too deep into that. But I, I would go to Vegas, either the, the city, um, you know, Japan. I've always really wanted to go to. Uh, I would just try and you know plan something and and go with some friends, anyone that would want to go, even Overwatch League players, you know, because we used to do that a lot in uh, season one and two. I remember a lot of players would travel, like Jonak and them went to like Canada or like other, a lot of other places, but now we can't really do that right now. So the uh, yeah, the I was scoffing earlier when you said I'm the kind of player that can't just do the same thing over and over and over again because you you were recently just doing that dumbass Sigma rock jump for like <laughs> three <laughs> days straight, and like when you're like, no, no, trust me, trust me, I'm not the kind of person that can just do something over and over and over again that's a, completely that's pointlessly bro. for no good reason. I'm like, well, what, no I, I mean, we reason. saw it. <laughs> what was the good reason for that? Did, 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 have you hit the jump, Sideshow? Have you hit it? I, I haven't uh, tried. Have tried. Let's have put it like that. I don't even want to okay, begin you, trying no, you, because I don't no, want to get sucked in. Addicted, yo. It's, it's a dangerous world. That jump right there is dangerous. I said it. I admit it to my addiction and I went to rehab and you know I've, I've come out of that. Oh, is, it, is this the one right here? <laughs> <laughs> Bro, listen, I, I'm telling you, it's these lobbies. Once, once people started making these lobbies for the jump, everyone started getting lazy with it. So you just had to, you just like would go to more and more attempts. You know what I mean? But oh my God. I'm getting Dude, nervous. I get nervous so just hard. watching, bro. I get nervous yeah. just watching. Yeah. I'm telling you, if you haven't tried the jump, you should do it. Mir, have you hit it yet? I gave up. Yeah, see? I'm telling you. I gave up after 100 tries. It's yeah, a waste no. of time. It is. Not easy, nothing from bro. it. Yeah. It's not easy, bro. Of course, it's, it's a waste rush. of time. It's absolute nonsense. <laughs> but but I can see how you would get hooked on trying it. I mean, if you're the kind of person that just can't let, I mean, can't let something go. You can't you can't let yeah, that win. Nah, you can't I, let I, the rock win. I wasn't gonna win. sleep if, if I didn't hit it here. I literally wasn't gonna go home. I'm pretty sure. I I was just gonna <laughs> stay there all night until I hit it. <laughs> I yeah, love that. that. I mean, that is bizarre to me. I definitely fall more down on Mirror's side of things where I would just try it for a while and then be like, well, this is fucking dumb. I just give up. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I, I want to kind of hit on the, the Gladiator season overall at this point, too. We're, we're a th Wow, what even are we? We're three quarters of the way through the year, I guess, because we're at the end of the third stage. Although there's still playoffs to go, right? So we're really more like halfway through the actual time period of the, the entire calendar of the Overwatch League. Once, once your impression of how the season has gone so far, your, your team is doing pretty well. I think you're fourth in the standings right now in North America, but it's an incredibly competitive region. And you started off a little shaky, went on like a six-match winning streak in the middle. There have been some, some great moments and some moments where it's been below expectations. But if you take a look back at the entire thing as a whole, how do you think about it? Uh, honestly, it's kind of like you said, it, it's, it's been pretty up and down, you know, at, at the start, we definitely played the worst as like a team and just individually, like we came in very nervous and, and weren't really confident in our play. And then that cost us those two matches. But after looking back at it, we were just like, we can never play like this again and kind of just kept that mentality, uh, and grinded through. But I think, you know, overall we, we've, we've been just becoming more of a team and forgetting the losses and just I, it's really stuck with me um i've been watching a lot of basketball like the playoffs and stuff and i know uh devin booker his dad was a professional basketball player and he gave him a quote that as a professional it's really important you have a short memory and you know you forget the losses and you forget the wins as fast as possible and kind of just keep moving keep trucking through the season so I've just been trying to tell the guys and and even myself just to, you know, have a short memory. If we have a big win, forget about it and focus on the next one. Or if we have a really bad loss, forget about it and just focus on the next game. And that's just been helping a lot, I feel like, overall for us. Mm. Do you, what, what's your thoughts on the season, Mira? Because you've, you've kind of come in and played a much larger portion towards the, the more recent games, I would say. There was some dabbling with uh, you getting playtime earlier on, but nothing really stuck. But then recently, part of the success, I think, has been you being integrated more uh, effectively. How, how do you look back on the season so far? I think it's like a team success that we work together better as a team toward the end of the season rather than the start. Because at the start, people were like great individuals, but it, we never glue in together as a whole team, as a six person when we're in the game. So those losses really reflect that uh, sometimes we just didn't work well together. So, yeah, 
we'll keep working on it. Mm. Do you see it though so, as just a general positive trend? Like, even though they've been, a, a, you know, it hasn't been like you, you've just gone on a complete match winning streak since then, made it to Hawaii, won everything. But do you see the general trend as just being generally positive upwards? It's slowly getting better. Every single stage, yeah. we're slowly getting better to, to get as a team. Maybe so not like, like a major trend where it's just like, oh, we just keep winning and uh, doesn't hesitate to do something together. But there's improvement in there slowly. Yeah. What, what, what drives those changes like that? Because obviously you came into the season with like big expectations and stuff like that. And you probably practiced before the season um, and, and you figured out what kind of team you were, but then you started off rough. And now in the middle of the season, you're like making steady improvements. Uh, you're, you're starting to figure stuff like that out. Um, like, is that just from reviewing matches? Do you make like coaching changes uh someone from you space is a bit of a leader um like how, how okay that was my dog sorry about that how is your how has like the team found their groove uh, this season what has led these changes is it finding out like what players work the best together what compositions work the best for you guys or is it just like philosophy about practice what what, what has sort of like changed to fuel this positive upward momentum yeah uh, I would definitely say well, one thing you just mentioned right there was more f like finding our play style and sticking to it has been something that uh, David or Adipe, most people know by our head coach has been like really trying to drill into us is that no matter what comp we play uh, to keep our play style, which is like aggressive and very fast tempo and always trying to keep the tempo in the match. Um, so because we've, we've struggled with the not not really compositions, but figuring out how to play them and how to play them at the best. And it's really just more about our play style and like when we're playing that comp. Uh, so that's been really important to us is just realizing that it's not about the composition. It's more about us as a, as a six on the field, like when we're playing. Um, and then I would also say it's just players kind of getting more used to each other and getting more comfortable in review. Uh, Cause a lot of times our coaches will do most of the review and then they'll go over it. And, you know, people kind of just sit there and it feels like a class or like homework, or you're just like, Oh, like, you know, how, can I get out of here? You know what I mean? Like, you don't sure, really want to yeah. be there. You're just like, I just want to leave. But I think once players start to get more engaged in it and they actually want to, you know, bring up clips themselves and like they want to go over stuff in depth, it makes it so that, you know, things, a lot more meaningful stuff goes into it and you get a lot more back out of it. You know what I mean? So that's been really important. It's just like, uh, and we're probably going to do that a lot for this last part is just making sure that every player uh, brings something to the table because, you know, if we're not winning, uh, perfectly for like 3 0 every time, haven't lost the map, haven't lost the scrim, then there's there's definitely something that everyone can bring to the table uh, that we can improve on. You know what I mean? So that's definitely really important. Yeah. Uh, at the very beginning of the season, you guys had major expectations on your shoulders, too. I mean, people were predicting you, I think, partly based off the strength of your roster and partly based off some preseason scrims, which I, I was not privy to, but that seemed to be what was some people were heavily basing things on. Of like, people were predicting you to win the season. People are predicting you to come in and just smash people. They're saying, okay, this is the team to supplant the, supplant the San Francisco Shock this year. Um, it, as as it turned out, the Dallas Fuel has done more of that over in the North American region, which was somewhat unexpected at the beginning of the year. But focusing on the Gladiators in particular, how do you deal with that level of expectation and then at the beginning of the season not quite living up to it too? Did, did it weigh on you, the fact that people were hyping you up? Did you hype yourselves up as a result of that or separately from that? How, how do you manage that kind of stuff? Uh, I mean, for me personally... It like a little bit i definitely heard all the noise you know what i mean like and i knew that we were really good coming into it uh, and i have high expectations for this roster and this team and i know we can win the championship so i already i already know all that i don't really think about uh, any of that stuff that much but i definitely think right now in in our region it's just it's it's very very close uh, especially with the Dallas field matches and 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 shock and all these teams that are uh, considered like the the high expectation teams every single game has been super super close recently and i feel like uh any one of us could be the top dog uh come towards playoffs or come towards the end of the season so it's really just kind of focusing on the day by day and making sure that you know where the at the end of the at the end of the match when it comes to three two or three o's that you know we're on the winning side of that yeah, there there hasn't really been a one and two in North America. It's pretty much like Dallas one, and then everything yeah. is so up for grabs because it's so tight to like you guys. Yeah, yeah. The rain. Shock is in there as well. Um, Miro, can you feel like the pressure when you jump into a match and play? Like, do you feel that pressure to perform with the team, 
or is it just like automatic you're used to this by now oh uh, it's definitely pressured because uh for me my level compared to like the rest of the team space kev shoe Mo even moth and even the new players that are being picked up they're better than me so i have to try and work my artist to be on the same level with them hmm. do you do you feel like you're do you feel like you've been suddenly surrounded by a, a super team and you have to step up to to match yep. their level definitely yes did you did you adjust anything yourself to to kind of to do that like have you uh, increased practice or taken things more seriously or like were there were there any actions that you took to kind of resolve that um it's more like i will get to know the player more like to get comfortable with them if i get comfortable with them and during scrim or review they wouldn't be like shy or awkward to point out my mistake sure and it goes the same for me to them as well yeah yeah I imagine that that's like a serious thing that you have to develop within a team atmosphere, the comfortability of being able to freely exchange criticism without either booming your teammates or just them being yeah. too shy to, to actually receive it. I know there's something yeah. that other teams in the league with, have, they've struggled seriously with it. Um, I think that was part of the reason behind a bunch of other teams being like explosive in the past too, or, or imploding was because people gave and received criticism in very different ways. Some people are extremely blunt with it, and some people are very reserved with it. Jonathan's nodding his head there, because I know he's played with some people who are wild blunt with their criticism. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, th yeah, there's just some players. I think I think Space has too, but we won't get into that. Um, <laughs> yeah, we don't want to get into the politics of this No, we don't want to get into that, dude. That's nasty. Uh, mirror... Like Space mentioned, of course, that, you know, it, it's important to get everyone to contribute in the VOD reviews and, you know, the team meetings and stuff like that. Uh, Mirror, does that come naturally to you? Um, or have you felt like you're making an effort to try to contribute more or, you know, talk more in those meetings? Or how do you approach those team meetings? Uh, to me, just whatever makes sense. And I'll say it. It's not like I feel like forced to say something. It was like, we did this wrong then let's figure a solution and how to fix it and do better next time mm. yeah are there people within those kind of vote reviews or or even like team fights stuff like that that tend to naturally uh take a a leadership role either they identify problems or give criticism more freely and or, or like have that kind of role within the team where they're pointing stuff out uh, um... i think Probably Moth, the most out of everybody, is just very comfortable with, uh, you know, uh, giving giving criticism and, and mainly on, like, a lot of comp stuff and how to approach fights. Moth is very, like, he, even if he feels like, you know, it might not be right or if it's wrong or someone's idea is better, he'll still voice his opinion, you know what I mean? And, and say, like, I think that this should it should be played this way. And if we figure out playing a different way, he doesn't really care. You know what I mean? But Moth is very vocal about in, in review and in feedback. Uh, he always kind of gets his uh, his opinion out there, which is really good. And I think a lot of other guys, uh, they have opinions and they they um, they want to talk about like what comp they think is good or what they think is is uh, is bad. But they're just probably more shy and reserved. You know what I mean? But our goal is sure. to kind of make everyone feel very comfortable in you, part of you and as a unit. A lot has been said in the outside community about Moth's like intangible impact onto teams. You know, because he was such an important part of the San Francisco Shock, but a lot of that doesn't really translate to your average fan because moth doesn't do like a shit ton of interviews and stuff and he's not yeah. he's honestly not the most like vocal player outside of the game it feels like he's he is a he is somewhat reserved he, he's not like super where he's fucking just chatting his mouth <laughs> off 24 yeah, 7 you know yeah. so so can you explain a bit more to me about like his actual impact in the team he obviously comes from this fantastic dynasty the san francisco shock and has worked with excellent coaches in the past what 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 kind of stuff does he add other than him playing lucio or whatever in your games what other stuff does he add to the team i mean you you probably heard it just so many times about how solid his mental is like in and out of game uh he's he's honestly he's just a, a rock when it comes to mentality and and being a professional and just uh you know, being able to handle feedback and, and criticism and all that kind of stuff and just being a good teammate. You know, when, when Kevster first got here, I remember uh, Kev was like a little homesick and didn't really want to eat any food or like uh, didn't know what he wanted to eat. And Moth would just walked up to him and was like, yo, like, 
uh, I know we got we had gotten in now, but Kevshi was like wasn't really into it, like didn't want to eat it. And Moss like, oh, like if you want, I can order you food. You know, like we can get whatever you want. Uh, just let me know. And I was like, damn, like you know, th this dude is stand out for that. Like you know what I mean? Because I had seen Kevshi too, and I was like, oh, like I don't want this dude to be hungry throughout the day. But Moss just went right into it, like yo, whatever you need, I got you. You know what I mean? And I was like, that's respect to that. You feel me? Like I didn't even think to do that. Uh, so he's just yeah. that type of dude, like that type of of teammate um, who just looks out for his for everybody else, and it's just kind of a role model for me has always been because I worked with him on USA before, and yeah. I knew him back when we used to compete against each other on Shock. Uh, so he's always been that guy for me, and I always joke about it, and I've always said it like that he's my favorite player, and that he's like uh, the one that I look up to. But it, I really do look up to Moth in terms of just being like a a leader and like a solid professional player. You, how, how does he uh, impact like the in-game environment because that's obviously out of game like stand-up leader you know like camaraderie love that but compared to some of the other shot colors you've had in-game like how does moth like change the in-game stuff like when you're playing these elim elimination matches against like tough teams in knockouts like how does moth change the game for you guys uh when it comes to like the fight coordination and team strategy and that stuff uh i mean he has like I said, he's he's very, very competitive. Uh, you already know, you know, two-time champion uh, and World Cup champion. He's super, super competitive and, and always wants to 3-0 and, like, win convincingly. Doesn't want to drop rounds to anybody. So, like, just that that energy when you kind of bring that to the field, which we have, but sometimes uh, we kind of lose a little bit. And, like, like, in the Paris match, we lost it a lot. Uh, and I even looked back at that and said that wasn't me at all. Like, you know, like, uh, that wasn't who I was as a competitor in that match. Uh, but Moth always has that, you know what I mean? He always has that fire and and that, like, fierce competition. So when you have playing with that, like, it's just, it just helps so much with a with, uh, strategy. And it kind of makes the flow of the game much more natural for us. Did, did you notice the same kind of stuff, Mira, when you're moving from kind of pre- this year to, to post this year? Was there a significant shift? Obviously, the entire team has changed as well. But would you... Did you kind of notice the same stuff from watching it sometimes on the bench, sometimes in the game? Uh, for me, Moth keep me in check the most out of everyone because my mental compared to his is like, I'm like here and he's like here. <laughs> okay. yeah, it's higher it's, than it's, that. It's, it's higher than that. Okay, it's probably know. here. <laughs> it's, it's, it probably wouldn't out of, it, it's probably out of the camera. It's probably out of camera. Yeah, probably out of camera. But then, yeah. yeah, every single time I get to play with Moth, it's just like I have to keep reminding myself He's trying, and if I tilt and my mentor shattered, it's not fair for him. It's not fair for everyone. So but, he's like my mentor. I have to keep like be in the best shape and best performance to like fair for everyone. The mental side of Overwatch doesn't actually get talked about very much. When, when uh, comparing it to a lot of other esports where you have like clutch moments or stuff like that, the, the mental aspect of it gets talked about a ton. Um, in Overwatch. There, there is still a large amount of momentum-based stuff. And that, mm -hmm. I feel, is where the majority of the mental aspect comes in, is stuff like in your Paris game, avoiding getting reverse swept or being able to close out good teams or um, being able to make the right adjustments at, at the crucial times throughout a match. Are those the kind of things you're talking about when you're saying the mental aspect? Because mental can mean a huge variety of stuff from tilting yeah. to, to giving up in the middle of a game yeah. to, to whatever. So can what kind of specific stuff do you mean there when you're talking about Moth having like an iron mental compared to Mirror saying his mental's down here? What <laughs> what do you what do you mean by that? I, I got this one. I, I okay, can explain this you got okay, so, <laughs> yeah. I mean I mean not to get like too specific and, and deep in it but mirror as like a when he he tilt when he tilts it's more just like say like we're starting a scrim block and we lose a, a first fight poorly because uh, we, we, we did the wrong thing you know mirror is the type to kind of just get tilted and be like oh like this is whack like we shouldn't have lost like that and then it'll kind of just stay in his mind and it'll snowball whereas moth is the type to just uh, don't worry about that go next and and just kind of keep going and trucking throughout the whole block and uh, right. making sure that you know, like I said before, just having a short memory and, oh. and not even thinking about what happened and just going to the next map, whereas Mirrors gets a little bit more stuck on it, uh, which has just happened. And, and and that's completely normal. You know what I mean? Like that that's just uh, something that happened. It, it happens to me too when I have really bad plays or like I mess something up, I'll think about it, but I just remind myself like I got to go next, focus on the next fight. Uh, so Moth is, is super, super good at that. Um, I think the mental game does come up a lot like you said it could be really anything uh but for us mainly it's just like 
focusing on the next and making sure that we close out our games strong uh, and and don't let something like Paris happen again where we kind of let our foot off the gas. You know what I mean? Because uh, sure. we were up. Uh, if we, I'm using that Paris game as an example, we were up 2-0 like convincingly, uh, playing really well, and then we had lost uh, Route 66, and it kind of just snowballed with us. It was like where it, it became more like. I want to just get this over with then right. okay these guys are putting up a fight let's fight even harder you know what i mean uh that's kind of where our mentality had got lost and that's just something we have to keep sure i i do i do definitely want to dig into the paris game a little bit but i want to rewind time to the beginning of the summer showdown to start off because we had a dp on the show actually and he was talking about how he wanted to implement a difference in terms of your play style and like his coaching style had had to adjust and he said he said to us he didn't want to give any specifics away but he was like you're going to be able to see some major difference right at the beginning of this stage now to me when i watch i could see a major difference but i don't know whether it was the same major difference that he thought i could see so what, what I noticed from the Gladiators was you guys were being insanely proactive. Like you were setting up for the next team fight as soon as the previous one had finished. You were playing like the, to start out, you were playing a lot of uh, Doom Sombra kind of compositions and Mirror would be in position. You'd be right there ready to take the next team fight and Birdring would already be in their back line ready to get a hack on like Violet, for example, when you were playing against the, mm -hmm. the Shock. Is that the kind of thing that you really came in with a focus in this stage to do? That it was about being um, always the initiator, always the attacker? Is that what David was alluding to at this point? I would definitely say if you look at the Overwatch League in general and just the champions, even from the last seasons, uh, except New York, but they're not a championship team, but they have been very dominant um, throughout their whole like organization in, in the league. Uh, the teams that go first and are set up first and control the tempo are usually winning. You know what I mean? When it when it was in Ghost Meta and there was Vancouver and Shock were the top two, those were the two teams that were always going first and Shock came out on top because they were going even faster than Vancouver. <laughs> yeah. uh, so, you know, that's kind of just the way that the league has, has, has shifted to or Overwatch in general has shifted to is just that the teams that are finding these windows and these timings and and going as fast as possible and like making sure that the other team doesn't even have a chance to breathe are are the ones that are winning uh and even if they're not winning it's it they're making it close and they're making it look uh good so that's kind of the mentality that i feel like the whole entire league has shifted to uh, a lot of these teams have gone to and you know that's just our play style is that we're not like a very slow passive team that like wants to bait people in we we want to go first and we want to like uh, dominate basically so yeah i would definitely say that's kind of what we're what our goal is yeah i, I definitely feel that because i i hate to do like people always give me shit because i like talk about the old good old days but like that was definitely happening with like yeah rogue yeah in, for sure rogue in 2017 and stuff like that as well because they would play like <laughs> triple dps and just like be in your face and they yeah. just like you, you'd be like spawn camped i mean it happened with selfless as well you know with yeah. uh, you know sinatra the fram that roster and i they do spawn camp you like it's so good to just like engage first and like pressure your opponent early. Like even here on both sky, just like dive outside the point, even if you're defending. It's yeah. like I mean, even it, if you lose so these powerful. team fights, yeah. you still respawn and, as well. Yeah, and just just think about like three, four years ago, no one would do this. You know what I mean? No one would think to do this or to go past the point and dive because just the game the game has evolved so much and the timings have really the, the windows of opportunity have really opened up with all like this high level play and this coaching that's kind of adapted and i i think it'll get even faster like you'll see people probably diving on volskaya they'll probably be diving the first point spawn when, when they're on second <laughs> point you know it, yeah. it'll just get more and more wild for sure and yeah, it, yeah. it's gonna be crazy Oh, Mira, yeah. as one I mean, of the players as one of the players that's like the tip of the spear in some of these you're not in on this map particularly but i, I you were playing this kind of style quite a lot throughout this uh, summer showdown too uh, is there also an element where it's easier to make mistakes if you're the team that's initiated first do you find that do, do you find that there's pros and cons with playing this style i think the cons doesn't really matter much because if you, there's like cons if you initiate first and Team fight turned out to be bad. There's more chance of like reviewing it and like, be like, how do we make it better next time? You know, and that's it. There's because no cons to it. It's always pros. Do you yeah. mean that because it's in your control? It's like you yeah. you defined it. Yeah, you, you weren't control. waiting for your opponent. Yeah, yeah, that's why Dallas is so good because they will always go on you and then it's make you like less time to think about what they're doing. Yeah. 
Um, so, so a change like this, we were actually talking to Deepay. I mean, we had him on Plat Chat not too long ago. Um, and we were talking about his coaching and how that's changed. Um, you know, and he seems like a very um, introspective person in that he like reflects a lot of his coaching and how he's changing his coaching. Been on the Gladiators, you know, space. You've been uh, with him for a couple of years now as well. Um, so he, he's making a change like this. Like, hey, guys, we need to play a lot faster. Is this a change that like he brings to the table? Or would you say he's more like, hey, guys, let's get together and agree on this. This is what we want to achieve. Um, was this more his decision or a team decision? We all came together and was like, this is probably what we should do as a team. Um, I think, honestly, from when we when we had first played at like the start of the year, like before Overwatch League, when we were playing in those tournaments, that was kind of just how we naturally played. Is like we're a very aggressive group of players. I mean, I'm... I'm very very aggressive I, i'm sure you guys know just by watching me play these four years like i will go walk to the other team spawn i don't care like i don't play as key i always go to the spawn so david knows that and that's just like my play style um and i think as a team that's just kind of what we've grown into and he just wants to make sure that we keep that you know what i mean and he's just kind of looked at the roster he has and said okay this is how these guys want to play so i want to focus on that and make sure that they they know that to capitalize on that and uh it just kind of flowed like that so it, it would definitely be more of like a it's not like david came one day and like this is how you guys are going to play it's more just like this is i know you guys like to play like this uh let's work on it as a team and i'll, I'll lead you in the right direction kind of and that's kind yeah. of what the flow has been did you have any more on this topic, Sideshow? Because I wanted to do a follow-up on a different topic. Um, um, no, carry on. Yeah, so um, obviously, Space, you've been on the Gladiators now for uh, two years. So you were uh, on the Gladiators in 2020. Um, and you had this very proactive playstyle as well in 2020. Obviously, a lot of things have changed. You like got new players, you know, brought in uh, new talent, of course. Uh, but what has changed with the play style from 2020? How how is it different uh, now in 2021? Because you're still playing like proactive, but honestly, David got a lot of flack early on in 2020 for like being too proactive and just like I, I remember like engaging outside of Paris point B and stuff, and people were like, "What are these guys doing? They're just like crazy, like going aggressing so fast." <laughs> has that changed anything, or do you feel like you know it's pretty similar to then? You're just better now. Uh, honestly, Amir, what do you think, bro? Because you was with, you was with me too. Uh, I think it's a, it's the same player style, but this year we're just doing better. Because I remember there was one time I think versus Toronto on Paris Point B, while we were defending, and we just like, oh, let's just go outside and fight. If we lose, it's okay. We have another chance at one point. Yeah, so just keep, just keep going. If you trust, if your six players trust each other, it, it will work. Yeah. Do you, do you, do have you that? feel like it was the trust maybe that people were lacking last year? Like you guys didn't believe that you were a elite level team. And so you couldn't quite pull off that same level of uh, aggression. Because you, you did try to play the same way last year, or at least some level of it. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't working to the same degree that it was this year. So that's what I'm trying to get into is like the, the, the factor that made a big difference there. Uh, it's more like the fact maybe this year we talk to each other more and then like how to improve the way we play rather than, oh, if it doesn't work, uh, let's just try it again next time without like any improvement. Yeah. Yeah, and I assume that's what Moth has brought to the table too, you know, mm -hmm. just being yeah. able to talk through those team fights and stuff like that as well. Um, how, how do you feel about the new talent in 2021 then? Because, you know, you got Muse as main tank now. Uh, replacing OG, Skewed has come in and played some Brigitte as well. Do you feel like they kind of like gel with that playstyle this year uh, as well compared to last year? Uh, definitely, yeah, yeah. definitely 100%. for sure. I think they, Skewed is <laughs> Skewed actually is always the one saying press W. He he says all the time, just press W, Shiba, like don't go back, like <laughs> just press W. Like he always says it, but just, just press W. But sometime when me and him are together. And I press W at the wrong time. He say, next time, don't do it. If you do it again, I'll yell at you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but Muse is also very, very aggressive mm -hmm. playstyle and likes to control the game and, and control the tempo, uh, yep. especially on, on Monkey. He's really good at it. He, like, leads a lot when he's playing Winston, for sure. Okay. That's interesting. You guys have done a lot of meta experimentation during this, uh, this stage, too. Like I said, you started out playing 
Honestly, it's only really you and Boston. I guess uh, Dallas actually did try to play some of this too. Like the the Genji, like Moira Lucio, let's let's in with the dive kind of stuff. But even though you weren't play exactly playing the Moira Lucio kind of stuff, you were very much playing a dive style that was yeah. very aggressive straight out of the gates when very few other teams were doing that. Um, mm -hmm. And it, the, it's clear that we've returned to some of the main melee's openness, at least, with the meta, where you can play a shit ton of stuff. I mean, yeah. there have been like five, six different, totally yeah. different metas being played in, yeah. the, in the Summer Showdown, which is even more than we saw in the main melee, I think. It was like even more open than that. Yeah. Is that cool as a player to be able to play like whatever the fuck you want? Or is it almost paralyzing the choice that you're <laughs> given? Because I feel like... Most of the most of the time that Overwatch has been around, the the job of a team is to find what is busted and get good at it. And if it's <laughs> open, you're like, oh, what the what the fuck is the best? I don't even know. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely been a lot, a lot of stress and a lot of doubting. Um, some scrim blocks where we have just been not so. Uh, I mean, like one honestly, one scrim block where we were completely shut down and we were questioning. Okay, is our comp like garbage? Is it terrible? Yeah. But it was. We just looked back at it and said, you know, it, it wasn't really them. It was just us playing bad, and you know, we weren't like thinking. We weren't actually thinking straight. Uh. So it, it definitely comes up a lot, and especially it's hard for the coaches a lot because they they they're the ones that are working on the comp and and you know they're like saying okay this is what's good and this is what counters us this is how we have to adapt so if they feel like oh like are we wrong and they they might have to want to do like a full comp swap it's it's a lot of pressure on your coaches i feel like and and players trying to make it work as as best as possible and like everybody trusting it um so it is a lot like you said for sure but as we've seen with dallas is like a team that doesn't even have a hit scan player is is absolutely dominating. Yeah. They've made Hawaii like three times now. Um, they're just rampaging through everybody uh, because they're a good team. You know what I mean? It doesn't really matter what comp they played, and and they proved that multiple times. And I, I give a lot of respect to that because I thought for sure that Dallas was just like a Lucio Mora one trick team, and that they were only good at that one comp. But they're good at every comp because they're just a solid team. So, so you know. how do you think a team like Dallas feel now? How how do you think they approach? Uh, you know, obviously you're not psychic. You can't tell what they're doing. But like, how do they approach like the summer showdown playoffs when Shanghai Dragons are just like dominating on Wrecking Ball and like playing the Sombra style? And it seems like they're shutting down Dallas Fuel effectively. Chengdu Hunters are playing more Wrecking Ball. Uh, we saw Washington Justice play a lot of like Wrecking Ball. Tracer Chengdu Sombra as well. Chengdu playing Farah as well, which they, they were playing Farah. Yeah. What, what's yeah. your answer to that? You know. Yeah. It, it's just uh, it's definitely just a lot of mid mid map mid. Uh, mid fight adjusting you know and realizing like what's working what's not working i know dallas is definitely really good at that uh and they've done it a lot and i feel like probably those also with with those um with those tournaments especially in hawaii uh i don't know if you guys have seen this but the teams that have been traveling felt like they're at a disadvantage because you know you you kind of get there and you don't really get to practice you just have to yeah. do like a lot of con uh content yeah. and whereas the teams in korea are kind of just there studying you guys the whole time and and practicing and they get to play from home so i i actually kind of agree with that i feel like the teams from korea should also travel doesn't really make sense um but i feel like atlanta because i did one with gator and he said that he felt like atlanta was just very tired when they got there and that oh, probably yeah. affects a lot of dallas too it's just like you're you're super tired and drained when you kind of get there and, it, and that will definitely affect your mid-match adjustments yeah yeah i mean i don't doubt that i think there was a similar effect honestly when it came to the uh the grand finals last year too which to me was i mean it's it's always amazing when people overcome that kind of aspect too. Yeah, and they're able to, to go like above and beyond it. I also think that there's some um, value to being tested in that way, like for Atlanta oh, to yeah, go and sure, have that travel sure. experience, especially because otherwise you might have been doing homestands where you got that experience a lot, and you may mm -hmm. do that in the future if the league decides to go back to that kind of model. Exactly. So having your rookie players go through that kind of stuff and having the squad gel in that kind of way probably does still have benefits on in the future too. definitely definitely um i want to talk a little bit here about the um your your tank partnerships as well space i want to hone in on that too um because over the what what even is it over the last is it three years that you've had four? just different ta four. four years that you've had different four, four tank years. partners every time? Bro. yeah of course of course so it feels like you've had just a rotating list of people 
that you've been working with, some of which have gone on to be good or great without you, some of which have gone on to just fizzle out, <laughs> and and some of which have gone uh, to, yeah, to to completely fizzle out. I, I, I don't know what's worse than fizzle out, but some of them have. So what what has allowed you to continue to be good in that off-tank role, despite so many different changes to, to your partnership? And, uh, and can you describe some of the differences of kind of playing with different people? Uh, I mean, it's, it's been a lot, you know, it's been a long journey for me specifically. There's the, like you said, bro, there's a very few amount of players that have been here from the start, uh, especially like American players that are even in the league or playing Overwatch anymore. Uh, so I've gone and seen a lot, a lot of different tank duos and a lot of different players. I think you know, I'm, I'm very passionate about what I do uh, and, and I'm very competitive. So, you know, if I ever feel like that isn't there for me anymore, I probably just wouldn't play at that point. But I think because I have that edge and I know that if I'm, I'm you know, really locked into this and I want to do this, that that kind of keeps me uh, motivated to, to grind and work even harder. And I'd say for the like new tanks and like getting used to them, it's just like, uh, making it, the relationship natural, you know what I mean? And just becoming friends with each other and, and making sure that, you know, like this guy wants the same, he has the same goals that I do. And, you know, making sure that we can kind of give each other open feedback and improve. Because I think in the past, I, I remember I told you guys that my favorite tank duo ever was XUC. And it was because sure. me and me and X were so natural with each other. We would just yell at each other and just say like, you should have done this, like, and just start cursing at each other. And he'd be like, nah, like you should have done this. It was your fault right here. And, but we would, we would hash it out and we'd become a better, a better tank duo. And it's kind of the same with super too. It's like, whenever you see me play with super on stream, he's always just yelling at me. You're so bad. You're terrible. Like, why <laughs> did you miss this right here? And I'm barking right back at him, like the same stuff. And that, that kind of uh, natural, like competitive, but like, uh, synergy like in that building is is just what you need i feel like and, and me and muse have that i'm always calling him the worst player in the world and you know, <laughs> he, he says it right back at me and we just kind of build off of that you know what i mean so it's just natural at that point it, it, i love how like how does that happen though like when he joins the team and he comes over to la or you just like just instantly <laughs> <laughs> like, no, nah, I, I boomed him. I boomed him real bad at the start when I, because he had, he had sat next to me and I played against him and he was on Ryan and I was just screaming in his ear like this Ryan player is horrible. Like who is this kid? He is trash. And I absolutely boomed him. And then I I let him know like yo I'm just playing around. You know I like I you know you're a god. And then he kind of got used to it and, and knew like what what was going on there. And then now he's been doing the same thing ever to me. And it just makes it so that. You know, even when we're giving real feedback, it, it's fun and we're enjoying it. You know what I mean? And that's just kind of the environment that I have with with all these guys. You know what I mean? I I say it's all of them. I tell them they're all horrible. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm kidding. I'm I'm showing, but that's just how I like to to make it more natural for everybody. Yeah. You, oh, what are some? Sorry, oh, yeah. I wanted to ask Mirror as well whether he has a player that he likes to call shit. <laughs> Do yeah, you yeah, have it's the, the guy behind me? The guy sitting <laughs> right behind me. Is that Kevster? Yeah, yeah, it is. Mm. Do, you, do, you, do you have the same kind of... Um, uh, you don't really have necessarily the same like duo partnership as you do when you're playing tank duos and stuff, but do you have, the, do you have that kind of attitude with the other like DPS players where you, you're uh, offering specific feedback based on that? Do you, uh, when you're sat on the bench, do you offer like review, personal review? Is there a situation or system like that in the Gladiators? Yeah, there's always, like, uh, the people that doesn't play, they always have to, like, spec scrim and review themselves to be like, what is the best for the team? How do we do this better? And yeah. But for me and Kev, it's just, like, straight up, if he miss, I would say, play better next time. <laughs> yeah, that's Are you it. Gonna, offering him really important advice. I, yeah. That's very actionable yeah, amazing feedback. feedback. No, that's, like, amazing. No, that's, that's actually feedback. We lose this fight and then we go back and we're just confusing each other and then it's just me and Shu to say, next time, just play better. <laughs> that's a solution. Yeah. No, that's that's great feedback. That's very actionable. Yeah. <laughs> that is exactly what we do every day. Yeah. <laughs> and that that's um, the secret to being good. <laughs> uh Space, I wanted to go back to your uh tank duos, of course, because you play with like, I don't know, like six main tanks at this point. It's been crazy. How many is it? Uh, How many is it in the Overwatch League? I can't even remember. League? Fate, Fact Fiction, XQC, Super in the World Cup. Uh, yeah. 
It's been use and OG. I didn't play with X in the league. I didn't play with X in the league, sadly. So it was, yeah. uh, was it like six or five or six around there. Five. Oh, like that, yeah. yeah. Five. Mira can count. The rest of us can't. I I lost count when you were just reciting names. <laughs> me, and, me and Mira played tank together one time too. Oh I yeah. Oh yeah. Last year. Last year. Yeah, Wait, really? Hog and Zarya I can't together. remember yeah. that. What? What was that? It was the Hog and Zarya meta, and I and oh, yeah. you just threw me on Hog <laughs> on Zarya, and we just kind of went with it. it, it honestly, it worked. Out. It worked that one map, but then we kind of lost our mind. We swapped around map. as well. Sometimes I'm yeah. playing Kong and sometimes he's playing D.Va. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that doesn't sound particularly sustainable as, uh, <laughs> as like, <laughs> developing. That, that, that was uh, not a main tank and off tank duo. That was just like, <laughs> let's, let's have a mechanic battle and see who did better. Yeah. 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 Uh, we, we didn't ask DP about that one, but I mean, we should <laughs> no. see what to learn from that one. Yeah. Um, How so <laughs> so so as a bit of a, like an off-tank veteran at this point uh space how what have you learned about playing with different main tanks so like when muse comes into this team do you identify like uh his play style like how he likes to play and how does that change how you play um how does that change the communication like i can imagine playing with like xqc like he probably like shot calls his brain out and just like hey let's do all of this like we're going to do it all like this um and then you maybe you have to sit back a little bit more and then in other duos, maybe your more communicative uh, shot calling, that kind of thing. Have you figured out like what your favorite way to like treat their partnership is? Like, do you prefer to be like the more vocally dominant off tank, or do you just like leave it up to the main tank and then you kind of like follow suit and do what they prefer? Um, honestly, it's kind of just feeling it out. I feel like, but I think. You know, when you start to get used to these guys, especially main tank is is a role that's kind of adapted over the years. Is these guys are controlling the game and they're they're very leader like. All of them, they're a lot of their personalities are very uh, leader like and just they like to be in the front and, and control the game. And I think you, you kind of just have as an off tank uh, to kind of bring that out of your main tank uh, and just you know find that and see like okay where can I improve on that for him because Muse. I know Muse, uh, he usually has the answer a lot and knows what he wants to do and what, what we should have done as a team, but he just kind of keeps it to himself and and wants to wait and see if other people see it or like, uh, you know, he brings it up after the fact. But I try and I always tell him like, yo, like, you know, you I want you to be the leader in that aspect. And, you know, I want you to, if you see the adaption, uh, bring it up and let's do it and let's try it. And and if it's wrong or if it, if it works, that's good. If it's wrong, we'll, we'll work on it and fix it for the next time. You know, so that's kind of just... Uh, what I look at as an off tank is just making sure that my main tank is, you know, we're, we're, we're doing the work evenly. I'll never like sit back and like let the main tank kind of take, do everything for me. Uh, but I want it to be like kind of balanced and, and make sure that the main tank knows his role. I feel like. For sure. Uh, I, I wanted to talk a little bit about that. Not, not exactly that game where space and mirror are playing together as the tank duo, but on a, in a more general sense, Mira, you were getting integrated into the Gladiators in a bunch of wild ways. Like, from the outside, it looked bonkers. Because last season, you were playing uh, Zarya at different points. You were playing... And I know that Zarya is something you've played a lot of in the past, so that makes some level of sense. But then you were also playing Brig for the team, too. Then you were coming in and also playing DPS. There was... I think there was even a match where you played all three, wasn't there? Last year. Look okay, at Toronto. Yeah, which is, I mean, that is bizarre. I don't know how that came to be. But this year, it has been gradually coming towards you being specialized back onto DPS. You did actually sub in a couple of times early on in the season on Zarya as well, I believe, mm -hmm. um, during the main melee. But those didn't seem to be, those didn't seem to work for whatever reason. And I, I know that when we talked to Dipe, I think it was in our interview with him, it could have been a different one. He was saying that it's because you like to lead the team from a Zarya role. You understand like how things should work when you're playing Zarya on the team. But there wasn't really the success that came along with that. Um, what what was some of the processes that you went through to get properly integrated with last year's version of Gladiators and now this year's version as well? Because it seemed from the outside to be a bit of a mess until recently when you've really found your role? Hmm. Uh, I think for me, I, sh I shouldn't play off tank. I think let's space play. <laughs> okay. I, I really don't want to play that role ever again. If it, it's fun. Playing Zarya is fun. I like playing Zarya. But then space gave like the leadership to everyone. And yeah, I we don't want to miss that. And But for me, I think I like to stick to play DPS more. 
Did you find yeah. it a challenge splitting playtime between different roles? Because I assume that you were scrimming as well on a variety yeah. of different roles. Uh, for me, I have to always be looking at the two roles. Like one is Kev Bird playing. I have to look at them, and when is Space playing his role, and I have to learn like two roles at the same time. But I think it's okay. It's not that bad. It's not yeah. as bad as people think it is. Yeah. Right. Right. I assume because you'd already played a bunch of it in the past, you were able to lean on some of that experience. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, like our play style is like help help me more as well. Maybe I, we didn't find any success because at the beginning of the year, it's not like as we said, it's not we don't we're not like comfortable with each other. But I think for now, if I play the same role, I think we will get we'll have the same result. Okay, we'll do better. Uh, Space, what was your thoughts on those kind of situations early on in the year when uh, you were getting like subbed out at the off tank role? I know that. I mean, when people think about space, they don't necessarily think about Zarya. They, uh, Diva yeah. and I suppose Sigma at this point too are kind of the roles that people associate the most with you. But it's still unusual to see the off-tank player getting subbed out for a DPS player. Uh, there's yeah. always questions surrounding it. Yeah. Um, I mean, for me, in my career, I never had to play Zarya professionally. And I didn't really practice her in rank because when I came up, um, it was Diva that was played. and then. It was literally Diva for like two or three years, and then yeah. I went to Sigma for a year, and then it just went right back to Diva. Uh, and then there was the Zarya ones, but um, the the DPS players played Zarya and Goats, and I think in some other metas too they played Zarya. Um, but yeah, so I never played Zarya professionally, and and so when Mirror came in, we had a, a really good Zarya player who played it professionally and kind of had like the the map knowledge and like the the leadership knowledge and like knew like how to min max it like really aggressively whereas i would be learning it in scrims and it would just take longer uh because i know I'm, I'm good at zarya and i could be definitely really good at that character but it was just mir was already ahead of me at that point so it just made more sense to play when you have someone that like really good at it uh but i think it wouldn't it didn't really come down to like uh, like a mechanic issue it would just be more like a team issue at that yeah. point you know uh, and we just didn't gel but uh mir is still super super really like really really good at zarya and it just makes sense if you have like a really good zarya player to play him but i think at this point it would just be like as mir said like it would just make more sense to, yeah. to play me and and let me you know um kind of figure it out and and we'll just roll with it throughout the match and it would be easy as, as that the 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 role swaps is one thing that makes things um that makes developing synergy a little more difficult but also just changing players the, now the changing players happens all across the league the gladiators are not unique in this but your your team rotates uh, between three dps players and then also rotates skewed in to come in sometimes instead of moth too so what what do those do i mean in terms of moth and skewed alternating playtime but also mirror yourself coming in too do you feel like you are at some level of a disadvantage because you don't scrim with the team constantly. I assume that you scrim less because you're in less. Normally, you'd be with Birdring and Kevster, mm -hmm. but that, that could be wrong. But do you feel like there's added um, responsibility to get up to speed really quickly when you get into the game? Or if you come in off the bench, are you a little cold? Are there any, are there any challenges involved with having that rotation? I think there surely there's like disadvantage for like a uh, player keep getting sub out or not having like a hundred percent play time, uh, but as a, a whole team, it's your responsibility to be catch up with the rest of the team, even though if you're not playing or not. Like you can always learn something, if, even if you're not, not playing. You can also watch and you can also know what's your teammate doing, what could we doing better, and yeah, that's what Moth and Scoot do really good at doing it. Because whenever I see Moth not playing, he's always like look at other player POV to understand. Uh, what does Shu want? What is Q doing better than me? What is like Skew lacking? It's like all of that. And it's just combined together. And if we're doing together as a whole team and like eight players, even though you're being benched or you getting play time, it, it will make a better team overall. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I have uh, another question about Moth and Skew, but I want to get back to you uh, integrating as well into this team and, you know, rotating play time. You mirror. Um, yeah. How does that affect your practice, like individually, and how you look at your career um, individually? Because you know you focus a lot on uh, being able to play the Echo, being able to play the Doomfist. Do you feel like a responsibility to just practice those two heroes? Um, how do you look at yourself as a DPS player 
um, and you know what you want to achieve in your career? Do you feel like you want to practice all the DPS heroes? Like you want to be a great Tracer or like great Genji and all that stuff? Or do you feel like right now, just focus on um, Doomfist, just focus on Echo. This is my responsibility. This is my job in the Gladiators. I think that's the way you said it. It couldn't be like more specific, but it's like, yeah, that's how I feel right now. But whenever I play, I want to put like 100% effort to it. And if we lose the map, the first thing probably come up in my mind is like, oh, how could I play better? What could I have done more for the team? Could I call more or yeah, just like mechanic. All right. Yeah. Um, and then uh, about Moth and Skew then, because they're alternating play time. Um, it, it's a big, big shift, you know, for the team, because as you all talked about, Moth is this like big leader in the team, especially mm -hmm. outside of the game, but like in, in the game too, bring this calm. And now you got Skewed coming in. He's a rookie. Um, he's, he plays Brigitte pretty much uh, entirely. Um, how, how does that affect like the communication and the shot calling of the team? Um, for, for you, for you, space as an off tank, like how how does bringing in skewed change the gladiators uh, compared to having Moth in the game? Honestly, skew's brig is just crazy good. Like this guy is just a craghead on brig. Uh, I think Moth is also really, really good at brig um, and insanely good at that character. Uh, but we, it, it, I think it's very similar to to when you know me and Mir would be swapped out it, it was just kind of like uh we know we're going to be playing zarya on this map so we're going to play Mir. uh and it's kind of the same with skewed it's just like we know we're going to be playing a lot of brig on this map and if he has to swap he can go zen anna or bat and doesn't have to play lucio uh then we'll we'll play skewed there just because we feel like he's so good at that character uh and it's kind of just the same situation with moth and skewed it's just like if we're gonna know we play we can play like lucio mercy um, all these different kind of characters, then Moth is going to play because he's super flexible on, on all those characters. Whereas Skewed is just really, really good at Brig, I feel like, and and we like to capitalize that and you know make sure he gets his play time on that. So, so do you feel more responsibility when Skewed comes in to like help out with the shot calling in some aspect? Is like Muse stepping up in the main tank role because Moth is so about, or do you think that Skewed fills what Moth provides the team, like ultimate tracking, all that stuff already? Do you feel more responsibility when Skewed is in? I think as a team, we feel more responsibility when Moth is out, I feel like, because, you know, when, when Moth is in it, it's such a heavy load off of everyone's shoulders because he's doing such a good job at all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, but when he's out, I think all of us kind of turn up another level and make sure that we're playing at a, an even higher standard because we don't want to... Uh, First of all, you don't want to disappoint Moth, who, who's <laughs> stepping out to let Skewed shine. And, yeah. you know, you want to make sure that the team looks the same and we stay the same no matter what, no matter who's playing or, like, what, what kind of uh, roster we're fielding. You know what I mean? Because it could be anyone in any situation. So we just have to make sure that we stay the same LA Gladiators. A, a, lot, of, a lot of talk in the, in, across Overwatch has been... Uh, very different to other games in terms of shot calling, leadership, that kind of aspect in the game. Because most teams tend to not have a very strict hierarchy. When you look at other esports, there's often one team captain, leader. Maybe they even formed the team or whatever because it's not a franchise system. And and, and it's it's their, their way of playing the game goes. And they build the kind of whole team atmosphere. That's not really how it works in Overwatch, especially when it comes to shot calling. It's normally much more spread out between teams. And like, if you want to go for a play, you call it, the team is with you, that kind of stuff. But something that I feel that often overlooks is that when you just grab a bunch of people and pull them together to make a team, there's, 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 there's going to be a lack of a vision of how you actually want the team to function. Like the, the social dynamics between people and the um, getting everybody to be really comfortable and, and happy to give feedback and defining how you want people to give feedback. That kind of leadership that's not directly shot calling in the game, but that, that leadership atmosphere. Both of you have played on functional teams and dysfunctional teams in the past. Do you feel like that is a, a major reason why a team can be functional rather than dysfunctional, having that kind of leadership um, structure in place. Definitely. And it's definitely just as you said, it. There, there is so much that goes on to it in the background that nobody really knows about. 
and it has a major effect on you know inside and outside of the game and just like players gelling with each other and having a leader uh, and and having someone that you know make sure that everyone stays on the right path is super super important um and and sometimes even uh dysfunctionality works you know what i mean just like there is no leader but we all show up and we all turn up and we expect each other to do that you know what i mean so right. there's some teams like that where it's just like we don't really have a leader but we we all show up and, and hold each other accountable and then there's other teams that kind of have you know there's leadership roles and and good great coaches that keep people in line and make sure we're you know focusing as a team so following up on that actually i got a bit of a like a weird you know dumbass question because i am the way i am but like sometimes i felt this when i was like peeking on rogue it's like this non-tangible kind of like flow to the game and you can see this if you watch the dallas fuel like they're just like a hive mind like they just like synergize in a way um and then sideshow mentioned these like structures and shot calling structures like systems in place for the team um Ha, ha, do you do you know what I'm talking about when I'm talking yeah. about like the Overwatch, yeah. uh, the, the flow state of just like everyone clicking and you're just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. How, how do you go from like integrating new teammates to trying to find that flow state as a team? Like, is there like, could there be like too much structure? Um, it does just like have to happen. Does it just happen over time with practice? Um, how, how do you how do you try to reach that level of teamwork that like Dallas yeah. you'll have? Yeah. Um it is definitely hard to get in it and so i feel hard. like i it's so hard to get into that um as a competitor and it's like i obviously feel like i could be doing a, a better job at it because i don't have any championships and we haven't made it to hawaii yet so i feel like i, I can be doing a better job of finding that for my roster um but i think it's really just bringing the best out of each other and finding like the competitor spirit and then like adding that all together and making sure that we play with that no matter what because when i when i look at this most recent tournament um i think muse was the most passionate and like most turnt he's ever been or i've ever seen him as a player like just mm -hmm. like super turned up and into it and like very passionate about it and i'm gonna bring it back to him and be like yo like i need you to be like this every day you know what i mean um and to kind of give me this energy every day and that that's kind of what uh builds that like dallas roster and like builds that trust and that that level of play where it's like these guys are one hive mind and you can really see it whereas other teams are very like maybe there's four people one fight and there's like two guys that were off on their own and they're saying like oh i thought we were gonna do this or i thought we we're gonna do that and it's like no like you you know you're supposed to do this you know what i mean um and that just that level is a uh, it's it's different it's very it's very hard there, there's so many different ways you can obtain that it's yeah. like impossible to go over all of them but i think just for us it's like really finding each other and uh find that competitive spirit you know what i mean muse just sounds like the the, the coolest guy man like i want to play with muse now like the way you talked about <laughs> yeah. muse this entire show i'm like yeah, he, dude he, i want to know more about this guy he's a very um passionate he's very young and passionate when it comes to to esports and just like he's a he's a big child basically you know what i mean so some days some days it's hard for him to kind of express himself but other days when, when you get him uh to kind of come out and be that leader that he knows he can be he's very passionate and just competitive you know and that's just kind of what we're trying to bring out of yeah. all of us basically i think what a lot of people a lot of fans especially don't necessarily understand is that um when you're talking about the top 0.01 percent of players in the game a huge difference is not necessarily their skill, but how determined they are to win. It's like all of this exactly. vague shit that people exactly. just call like vague bullshit of like, yeah. I am determined or a championship real. mentality. But the Dude, problem is crazy. it really does make a difference at the top level because your motivation and your determination to succeed turns your focus on and makes you want to continually improve. And you, 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 you feed off that energy that other yeah. people bring to the to the table as well yeah. and and that doesn't it doesn't happen at a ranked level you know yeah. but for a fan if you're jumping into a game the big difference between you and the other team might be they they fucking click on you better or they just <laughs> understand the game better you know but yeah. at the at the top level the margins between our elite teams especially in north america where it's so competitive from like 1 mm. to 5 it mm. it really does feel like dallas have just found the um yeah, the the fucking hive mind where yeah, they all yeah. just understand that flow to their game. They know what everyone's gonna do, yeah. and they all believe they can win. So they're just going for it a hundred percent all mm -hmm. the time. 
And yeah. it's it's interesting what you just said, and I want to just get this out while I can because I'll never understand this. And and Mir is uh my victim here uh because he's a a very he always does this, um but I will never understand why professional players flame and tilt at normal players and just regular casual players because they're trying to hold them at a higher standard that you wouldn't hold them. You know what I mean? Like if I got in a game with Sideshow, I would never flame him because I know Sideshow is not trying to play at my standard or play at my level. But if you got a, if you got a game with Mirror Sideshow, he would eat you alive. <laughs> he would be destroying See, you. See, that, that makes me really want to play player. with Mirror. I don't know whether <laughs> no, I'm in it just getting not. fucking shit on. I'm like some horrible masochist, but I would love to play with Mirror and just get this berated into the dust. He would eat you alive. He would probably get banned. He'd probably get banned. Um, I haven't got but, banned yet. But yeah, okay. so it, it's just very interesting, and I think a lot of players have started to realize that is that you don't really hold casual players at a professional level, and that just sure. helps your mental because because you're just going to start getting gray hairs at like 25 if you're flaming every random rank player that comes across your ways. But I think that's it's very important, like you said, to just like realize that we're playing at a different level. You know what I mean? And this is what we do for a living, and and it's a it's completely different, and you sure. have to find that competitive spirit. Mirror, yeah, when you're I, when sorry, I just want I want I want Mirror to have his opportunity to respond to these allegations as well. Because, he knows it's true. He's not wrong. He knows, He's not wrong. He knows I'm right. <laughs> but but I want to yeah. dig into a bit of like why is it just because you get pissed off because you you want things to work like they do in a team environment? Most likely, yeah. And there's like better practice as well. So if I go right. into a game and I see just a guy just like running it down, I'll be like, it's a waste of time for other five players. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's yeah. why sometimes you can see me in the Overwatch League Discord and be like, why, why do I wait 30 minutes just to get one guy just running it down where I, yeah. I'd rather get 30 minutes and get like 12 Overwatch League players in the same lobby? Mm. It, honestly, yeah. I think it's experience and just a mentality. It's just you need a mentality switch because it's like, you know, I honestly, last year, you guys know, because uh, we had talked about this last time I was on here, uh, when I, when we were in playoffs, I was super, super locked in, like the most locked in I've ever been. Yeah, yeah. Um, and just bringing up everything, like, you know, this needs to be right, this needs to be right, we can't make this mistake ever again. Um, and I played ranked one day on stream, and I, like, completely mental boomed and was like, I can't play because because I was, I was in that locked in mode uh, from practice. And obviously in rank, these guys are running it down. Like Mira said, <laughs> yeah. they're trolling. They don't know yeah. what's going on. Yeah. And I'm, I'm over here like about to call this guy out. And I'm like, this is a random rank player. You know, I can't do that. Like, that's not, that's not what I do. Um, no. And so I just, I turned off the stream and I was like super emotional about it. And, and um, uh, Curry shot, our coach at the time, I told me like, look, you just have to say like, you control what you can control, you know, in practice. That's that's your time to to go in and be passionate and be the player that you are. Uh, and in ranked, that's when you know just let the game flow. Make sure you're focusing on yourself. And and if these guys want to run it down or if they want to troll or if this person wants to play Moria only or or Torb only, let him do his thing and you just focus on yourself. You know what I, I mean? And I think you know Mir has grown a lot um, thinking yeah. about that and, and just focusing on that. And but uh, it, it was even, even back when I used to be before I was professional, I would. You know what I mean? I would hold people to a higher standard or like be like kind of tilty, ragey. But now that I'm a pro, it's just like, I'm not really concerned about you. You know what I mean? Sure. Do, do whatever you want because I have practice and that's where I have to shine. Sure. You know what I mean? I, I wanted to just jump on what you said there too because the the attitude of um, uh, of being locked in in that manner and trying to fix every tiny thing, I think is a specific example that highlights the, the vague stuff that we were talking about. Because if your teammates aren't giving you the impression that they're going to listen to that shit then people stop giving it as well. So that's what I was saying when I'm saying that like you feed off other people's energy is because yeah. if they're giving you the impression that they're also going to take all of what you say to heart, you feel incentivized <laughs> to give more feedback. Exactly. And, and yeah. if, if other people are acting apathetic or, or they, they, they're not showing you that they want to get to that level, you're less exactly. likely to give them the feedback to get exactly. to that level as well. Yeah. So that's, that's yeah. maybe like a more specific example for the audience of how that, the vagueness of determination actually has yeah. literal impact in VOD review or, or scrim examples. Very much, very much. Yeah, for sure. I, I love how you highlighted as well, like the, the the lack of opportunity to get like really good practice as well. Because I don't think even like listeners at home realize how much pressure you feel as a pro, like in the seat both of you guys are in, 
where it's like you're fighting for prize money, you know, you wanna you wanna win these trophies, and you end your scrims, and you're like, my best way to practice now is ranked or like watching vods. And yep. so often you have to go with ranked. Um, whereas uh, you know other titles, they just like have like lobbies full of like Overwatch League players or not yeah. Overwatch League players, but you know the top like pros. FPL in the edition. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, private yeah. all that. Stuff. Um, yeah, like th- I, I feel like that has been one of the biggest frustrations for pro-, pro players in Overwatch is not having the opportunity to play in those lobbies like Pogs um, with other pros because of this reason. So like most of the pros actually flaming on ranked. I love how you hit that like nail on the head. Just like. They set yeah. this expectation uh, on other ranked casuals because yeah. they have nowhere else to go and they yeah. really just want to improve. Like, they really just want to practice. Itching, they want to do their yeah, best and they can. Itching. They're barking yeah. at everybody. Yeah, it, it, would, it doesn't make sense to me, but I want people to kind of understand that. You know what I mean? And Because I know, like, these guys are... A lot of those guys that are eating people out and ranked are great people. You know what I mean? Just look at Mir. Like, this guy... I love this dude. He's been my roommate for two years. You know what I mean? So it's like when I see Mirror like that, I'm like, bro, what are you doing? You know what I mean? Like, why are you, why are you barking at this ranked player? <laughs> like, why are you trying to eat this guy out right now? And it's just like these guys will get caught up in themselves. Like, I don't even know why I'm flaming these dudes. Like, they, I don't even know these people. <laughs> like, yeah. so yeah. it's just very interesting that that yeah. mentality that people get into. Um, one of the uh, one of the big differences for your team must have been to be able to actually interact with Kevster in person as well, because we're talking a lot about like interpersonal relationships on the team. It's got to be harder to do that when it's all online as well. People lose focus. People don't like uh, you, you can't have the same direct connection with somebody and build that trust, that chemistry. So what's it been like being able to get Kevster over in L.A.? We talked to Deepay right before it happened and he or right as it was happening, I guess. And uh, he was like, oh, yeah, I don't think, like, his mechanical level is going to improve particularly with him being on reduced ping. It's probably going to be, like, more of the teamwork aspect. That guy's been fucking shitting on people on Tracer. He is nasty. <laughs> he's kind of he's kind of looked leveled up on that role at the very least. Like, it, playing yeah. Tracer on 200 ping must have been a barrack, but he's uh, Yeah, it's just taking off the training ways for sure. Yeah. yeah. It definitely is definitely been a very big impact and had a, a huge impact on all of us in just terms of like being a whole and getting Kevster off that 200 ping uh, and kind of having that environment like because he's it's kind of his first time to be with the team like this and like I said he's he's been pretty homesick uh, so we just try and make it as easy as possible for him and make him more comfortable with us and just lock in and finish it you know uh, finish the season off strong. Uh, yeah. Now that we have catch the year, but I don't know what Dave's talking about. Definitely, if you go from 200 ping to like land ping, you're yep. going to be a monster. Like, this is going to be a different game. You know what I mean? I think, and Kevster is showing it. Yeah, sure. maybe he was trying to temper expectations, you know? Maybe he was yeah. trying to stop the the European fans from going yeah. through the roof. I don't know. Yeah. So we, we don't really know anything about Kevster. You know, he's been pretty quiet. Um, I, I, I don't know. Does he stream like a ton? No, he uh, hates streaming. No, he doesn't. Yeah, he does. yeah. So, like, come on, give us give us some insight. Yeah, like, who who is Kevster? Like, how is he to practice with? How is he to play with? Is is he just like a mechanical god? Is he like this genius when it comes to strats too? Like, what what's Kevster like? Give us the gossip. Kevster loves to play sports for no reason and he loves yep. to play with basketballs and soccer balls and and passing in, in during the in the practice room if there's a ball around he kevster has it in his hand and he's playing with it and he's he's trying to like pump fake you or like make you flinch <laughs> and just like oh, i got you i got you like and he, he pisses off the koreans so much when he does that and when he's throwing the ball they're like oh kevster like little kid like just like cursing him out in korean he's just laughing the whole time so he's he's very uh like athletic and giddy for some reason, I don't know why, but we we try and hide all the balls in the in the uh the facility, but he always manages to find them and just and just get <laughs> them and then just starts dribbling around and bouncing around everywhere. Uh but he, he's crazy. He's he's a very crazy, interesting kid. Mir probably could give a better insight than I can. For me? Yeah. He's the same yeah. as I expected. Yeah, Whoa. I mean he used to play he used to play soccer, so for me it's like uh, it was expected and to point it as like the other people that work at the other side of the office was like had to complain to us it's like oh you need to stop dribbling the ball while it's work hour otherwise <laughs> we gotta do something about it so yeah why because it was like banging on the roof below you or something 
Yeah, it just kept banging yeah, like on the a, ground. Yep, it's the same floor, and then he just like keep dribbling it for like yeah. thirty minutes straight, and, and we, we were like, "Hey, stop, stop, stop!" He's like, "It's okay, no worry, just let it happen." <laughs> yeah, I guess it's. Yeah. I mean, I, I understand that as well. I like. Uh, uh, I'm not. I'm not even gonna go there, but yeah, it's. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's. Uh, it's like a. It's not just a stress relief. It's just I don't know. I, I like. I like whacking. Tennis balls around and stuff like that. Yeah, he, he's I, also I understand it. A I very get it. big. Um, he's a very big joker. Like he multiple times he's changed people's settings. Uh, before the screen block started, he no. unbound. He unbound <laughs> shoes no. made yeah. like three times. He unbound yep. like, shoes unbound, made yes, before screams. Scrims, 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 we have, like yeah, we have to pause scrim sometimes. Yes, and she was like, "I got Nate angle. I got a Nate." Angle. He's spamming E, and he's like. Well, where's my name? And then he'll look name? at Kempster, and Kempster's just dying, laughing, and we're like, "Bro, what is going on?" Like, I would script. be so tilted, dude. And David's just like, "I'm going to kill this kid, bro. Like, <laughs> this kid it can't keep getting away with this." So we all have to check our settings before we start blocks or start matches because we don't know if Kev changed them or not. <laughs> and sometime before script, he's like, he's like the guy that's like one minute before scrim start. He's like, "Oh, I'm gonna be right back." Always. Yeah, always. He's never always. on time. There's always mm. there's something there's, like he'll be arrived here like 15 minutes early. P- normal people would just be like, oh, I'm gonna go to the bathroom, wash my face, get water and stuff. But he always wait to the last minute. He like last second before the scrim starts, and like, then he goes to the bathroom. Yeah, he goes to the bathroom. <laughs> or during break, like the five minute break from scrim, you would just find him on the beam back to sleeping. <laughs> yeah, that yep. uh, that reminds me. I think it's Violet, isn't it? That just goes to yep. sleep everywhere. He's yeah. knocked out yeah. all way. Yep, yeah. he's the same it's person. Something about those gaming warlords, man. It's the it's the mechanical freaks. They just need to sleep <laughs> all the time. Their brains their brains need the rest, I guess. <laughs> uh, that's interesting. It's it, it is always interesting as well to see what people are like when they're like in a, a team environment too. It'd be mm. uh, it'd be even crazier if you guys were on the road all the time, like the plan was for the twenty twenty oh, season yeah. or something. Yeah, definitely. Um. I want to return to the talking about the summer showdown a little bit. We didn't have this in our topic list, but I do want to touch on that game against Paris. Um, but I want to talk about the game against Paris and the game against the Washington Justice as well. Um, and particularly talking about kind of the run through that. So you, you discussed a little bit that you went up really early on 2 0, and then mm-hmm. there's this Route 66 third map. And from then, that was the beginning of the reverse sweep. And I think a lot of people have been talking about it from the view of the Paris Eternal. It was our second ever reverse sweep in the season, which seems bizarre that there have been so few this year. But I think that was only the second. And then there have been tons since then. So they they opened the door. But what happened in this game? Because you tweeted afterwards, I think, that you boomed on Route 66, which you still had two extra maps after that to try and solve what was going on. Can you Can you talk us through some of that? Well, honestly, from where I left off, it was kind of just like we, like I said before, it felt like when we went up 2-0, like convincingly, because we were we were playing really well at the start, uh, and we started on 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 route when we started like losing a little bit or started to not make the plays that we wanted to, and just like kind of executed poorly. Uh, our mentalities just went from like, oh, like you know these guys are decent. Let's let's try harder to just kind of like. Oh, get me out of here. You know what I mean? Like, I know we're, we know we're the better team. Like, we know we should have won this already. Like, just hopefully someone clutches and we finish this map. Yeah, we finish this series. You know what I mean? And for me specifically, I, I had just lost my edge uh, after after Root. Like, I, I kind of just lost my mind and was trying to, was like more focused on like peeling and like figuring out what the problem was than just like playing our game and like making sure that we played uh, the right. same way we played. I don't know how other people feel. I'm sure they felt the same as me um that we kind of just had lost like i like i tweeted that we just lost our minds and, and let it snowball um but it, it just we just lost the edge after that map and it just kind of snowballed with all of us of just like oh like they, i mean even just look at us right here in this picture we're kind of all just like oh my god yeah i mean like, Muse now was, we have to play maps yeah Muse just was like, playing zarya at the end of that as well just the yeah. in, like the final moments which i i found yeah. to be a little bizarre and like he, yeah he was trying to gamble to get a bubble off on kev's blade and right. see yep. if kev can finish it out right there and then we didn't and then but we just didn't go next you know what i mean like it kind of just it just stuck with us and that really cost us the series did but, you have a you different know, impression really... from the bench mirror because you weren't actually playing in that root game for me i think it's just like we just didn't play normally we didn't solve problem together, which is like individually and hope our mechanic would carry us and not together as a whole team. So yeah. 
we just lost ourselves. Even though Map 4, I, I lost myself as well w walking in and playing the game. And on Anubis, it's just like me just like panicking. That is like, what do I need to do better rather than talk to my whole team and yeah. make them or talk to them and yeah. they'll help me play better. Yeah, it kind of just became like a how can we finish this as fast as possible than yeah. rather than it just being like, okay, like these guys are actually doing some good stuff here. Like, what can we, how can we counter? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, and we've just tried to make sure that it never happens again. And I think uh, even with the three twos that we've lost, it hasn't been that situation where it's like, oh, we're losing our minds. It's kind of just been like, we needed to play a little bit better as a unit. And it's like not, not yeah, the this same one situation was, as the, yeah. This one this was definitely completely different. different. Than, yeah. than the Atlanta and the Washington ones because mm -hmm. the Atlanta and Washington ones we really played our hearts out and um gave everything uh Washington yeah. Washington just had a comp they were playing a comp style we haven't really seen before and then it took too long to adjust and then we lost map five and then Atlanta was just like uh I haven't really thought about it just yeah, map Atlanta trading. it was just yeah we just map traded we first went held them two times they first went held us one time mm -hmm, and then yeah. we lost the cause when we needed to win and that yeah. kind of just costed us the series uh, but yeah, it's completely different from this one. You know what I mean? So that's stuff no. that you can work on. This is stuff, something that you can't really improve on unless you no. keep that edge. What was was part of this the fact that Paris had only just become like a team to genuinely respect? Uh, this this was one of the first games where people realized, okay, Paris are actually a decent team. So was part of the, okay, let's just get it done because you underrated them and you were still thinking about them as being an easy team to brush aside? Uh, no, not for me, because I don't ever do that for any team. Um, specifically for me, I I would never do that because I've I've lost to teams that people have underrated or you know what I mean. People have brushed aside and you know they they come back and and it bites you bad. Uh, and that loss hurts a lot. I I just think for me personally, it was like we had went up two zero and I was like seeing like oh like why are, what are we doing wrong like what is it and I kind of just tunnel on it so much instead of talking to my teammates and like talking to the coaches of like what is it that we need to do better and stuff and like we just kind of like slowly went into this shell when really it was just like we needed to talk to each other and fix a problem and then boom like forget about what just happened and we're gonna run the, like we're gonna run this show you know what i mean we just kind of get like fell into a shell and it just kept kind of snowballing with us mentally and i think a lot of it was on me personally like i i uh didn't bring the fire that i usually bring or i always do no matter what the situation is i kind of just lost it in that series um and that was like really bad you know what i mean cool. uh, and it also it also could have affected some players that that we had just beat shock three two uh mm -hmm. so some players could have been a little bit just like oh this we don't have to really worry about this match. right right uh worry, worry about this match and then that could also bite you you know what i mean it could be so many different things that yeah. that could happen for everybody yeah do, do you resonate with any of those uh points mirror were, were, were any of those kind of what was going through your head as well I think that's what went through my head and it's like i'm pretty sure it's like even though we lost to washington and atlanta but i'm still proud of my team to the fact that it's like i'm sure if we play atlanta and washington at the same time we play the paris match for sure it'd be like we lose lose zero three right instead of like three two or like we actually put up a fight that against justice they're really annoying we we're like zero two down but on the third map we start adjusting it's like we start talking to each other but if give us like three months before on a third map, we'd be like, just get us over with, just lose. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Um, let's talk about the justice game a little bit too, because I could not find two more different teams in the entire league. Honestly, the Washington Justice are a very reactive team. It, at least mm -hmm. it feels like that to watch them. They are slow paced they are waiting for the other team to act a lot of the time they're trying to absorb aggression and throw counter punches whereas you guys always want to be the aggressor you're, you're always going first yep. does that change things drastically because when i was watching the game i was like okay well historically teams that have punched first tend to do better and then when mm -hmm. i was watching the game play out i was like well actually they are kind of dragging the gladiators into uh into unfavorable fights because you're trying to go early um, mm. And so it felt like their style, actually, of catching your aggression was working very well at the beginning. Um, yeah. What, what did it feel like from inside the server? I think for, okay, so what I can tell you right now, just based off that match, without like going too deep into strategy, is that 
assassin was the first samba player we had played against where he was just out of stealth shooting the whole time with the zen orb and diva matrix and all these people pocketing behind him and just shooting us in the face the whole time that, that was the first time we had come across that mm -hmm. uh usually samba players are always setting up behind you looking for a dive looking to get on your back line looking for a hack uh, so that was something we had to adjust to and and it took it obviously took too long to do it um but we had to talk it through like mira said where it was like okay what are these guys doing that's different and it was like assassins just shooting muse in the face the whole game like he can't do anything sure. and then by the time muse actually goes we're already dead you know what i mean uh so it was something we had to adjust on and and when we did it it worked out really well um but that was really like you said it's just like they're they're trying to bait you in into an unfavorable fight uh but our goal was just to make sure that he can't do that and once we shut that down it was like uh, easy from there. Yeah, something I noticed from watching the Shanghai Dragons play actually is the amount of pocketing that Lip gets when he plays Sombra. The, he has just Brigitte armor packs up the ass. Every yeah. just every fight is just Lee Jig on is throwing yeah. these fucking brig packs at him constantly. Yeah. And then sometimes, like you said, he's got the harmony orb on him. I mean, you're talking about assassin, but it's a. I think it's a somewhat similar style of play where so yeah, very, much very. emphasis is. It on happened the last year with us as well when we scrim Shanghai when we were in Korea before right. COVID happened, and we scrim against Shanghai one time, and I'm pretty sure that block. None of us was happy. It was really stressful to play against him. Yeah, yeah. Because it's just like an unstill samba just shooting in your face. Like nobody's used to that play style. Everyone's yeah. used to the samba going behind you, trying to hack somebody or assassinate somebody. But it's just like a new way people play the character, and you just kind of have to adjust and adapt and figure out your counter. Who, who who makes that adjustment like within the team? Because that's a pretty like scary adjustment. Like I can just imagine it's like what do we even do against this Sombra? Just get yeah. with it. Like, mm. who comes up with the initial idea? Is it just like you got to trust your teammate on that one? Or like, how does that adaption come into play? Uh, I think it's really just all six of us talking to each other. You know what I mean? That's really what it came down to. We literally went down the line. Like, I think it was like after, like mm. during Hollywood, we had kind of just started talking to each other. Like, okay, like what, what's going on? Like, why is this so mm. hard right now? And it was just like, Muse is like, I'm getting shot in the face all the time. And Kev's just like, this guy is like, like poking me out the whole time and then it's like all right well how do we counter that like what can we do it's like all right we can go even faster or we can poke these guys out you know th there's a lot of answers that come up but yeah. we have to figure out one and then make like see if it works and then do something else you know what i mean but it's just a lot of like uh people being comfortable talking about getting shut down you know what i mean because mm -hmm. a lot of times people will uh you say you're having a hard game like they'll kind of crumble up under the pressure and just like i can't do anything like this is too much like i don't know what's wrong but like really if you had talked to your teammates that could have been a completely different series you know what i mean like we could have changed that for you or helped you get more value uh so that's just really what it's come down to and that has helped us so much through the harder series yeah when you look at the other teams that are playing in the summer showdown right now like the teams that have actually made it to hawaii i want to get preds who do you think is going to win who is going to win the Summer Showdown, and, and why do you believe that as well? I don't know how much you've been watching the APAC region yeah. with Chengdu and with Shanghai as well. Yeah. But they've been playing a lot of the balls end kind of comms. Chengdu's been playing some Farah involved with that as well. Both teams playing a shit ton of Sombra involved too. So they, they're playing a very different style. But Ooh. we have seen some of that be played over in North America too. Yeah. It, it felt yeah. like it was coming in more towards the end. Uh, Space, I want to start with you. Who, who do you think has got the, the advantage in Summer Showdown? Oh my goodness. I mean, I haven't watched Chengdu play at all. I know they're nasty. They've always been a really good team. Um, they've always been a solid team. So, But they're playing against Dallas, who Dallas is definitely the number one team in our region. Um, so this is hard. I think, I think it might just be a Dallas-Shanghai again. Okay. I'm thinking it's a Dallas-Shanghai, and that will probably go the distance from, from what I'm thinking. I think it'll go the distance for sure. I, I need a team though. Who's gonna win? Who's gonna win? <laughs> <laughs> Dallas, Dallas, Dallas. Okay. Dallas. I think All right. Dallas, Dallas is gonna get the revenge Dallas after the is, Dallas is looking for revenge. They're looking for revenge, and I think they're just gonna they're gonna be different. I, I'm expecting them to be different for sure. Okay. What do you think, Mira? I trust Dallas. It's always Dallas for me. Oh really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. I did. I, I thought the overwhelming majority was gonna be like Shanghai. No, oh, I, I think I think Dallas. I don't think they'll be they'll play the same like they did last time versus Shanghai, where they should get like reverse swept against the ball, and they'll be just like figuring out problems. Because if you look at them, they went map five with Washington, and then on map five, it just ran over Washington. Yeah. Do, you, do you think that's a specific strength of Dallas to be able to adapt the series? 
I think I trust Fearless. That guy mental is insane. <laughs> yeah. He he was like on the zero forty Shanghai team. If I was zero forty, I think I'd just be like, "You never see me again." <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, the comeback story. Yeah, it is absurd, isn't it? It is actually mm-hmm. absurd. Like the guy goes down back to Chinese contenders for a while and then comes back yep. into the league. It wasn't. Yeah, yeah. The, it's it's madness. Mad whenever respect. Players do that. Mad respect. Yeah, that is wild. All right, well, there's a very different perspective too because our our plat chat predictions were for Shanghai to take it. So I'm, Ooh, I'm I am excited. Okay, L- listen, we'll see. Let's everyone's see got Shanghai Dallas in the finals because it's just been the finals the entire time up until now. Yeah. So it's yeah. the it's the safe, boring answer, but it's probably also going to come true. So mm-hmm. I, we'll I, see, I do we'll wanna, see what Chang do brings. Yeah, I do want to get maybe Atlanta a, too. Exactly, I want to get a little piece on that too. What do you think Atlanta's chances actually are in this? I think Atlanta chances like. Honestly, it's better than last time because I think Pelican and Edison are like fucking insane. They're like really smart DPS player, and they're, they're obviously it's like uh, other four player. But I think Atlanta rely on Pelican and Edison the most. Okay. Okay. Yeah. For me, uh, just because I look at that series when they played against us, I think Atlanta needs to put. I don't doubt Atlanta, but I think they need to put in a lot, a lot, a lot of work. Mm-hmm. And watch that series and go over went wrong. What went wrong? Because we did first point hold them two times. Sure. Like convincing sure. first point holds. Um, and I think when they're playing against those teams, it's gonna be a different story. You know what I mean? Like if they don't yeah. fix that up, those maps are gonna count are they're gonna cost them a lot because we lost in the clutch for sure, but on the other maps we we won convincingly. You know what I mean? And then they did it to us on King's Row, which is because we played really bad on that comp, on the ball comp. Um, but definitely, I think Atlanta has potential to upset, but they they need to lock in for sure and okay. and know like they I, they sh- they can't get complacent because they be us, you know what I mean? Like yeah, they can't yeah. be happy they made it. They gotta lock in and be like, yo, we gotta work hard to get this because it's 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 not gonna be easy for sure. Yeah, yeah. Um, the last question before I let you go and uh, appreciate you you coming along and giving us such excellent answers as well i want to talk a little bit just about the end of the season we have the final portion of the season coming up when you think about the season so far and what you've been able to achieve what is the goal for this gladiator squad and how close are you to being able to achieve it for me definitely i want to go 4-0 uh in in this last stage i want to go 4-0 yeah, and i want schedule. to win I want to win convincingly against these teams. You know, we have a very tough schedule. We have revenge matches too against Washington and Atlanta, and we have Outlaws. I think for our first time yet. And then I don't know who was the last one. Mayhem. You guys know Mayhem. Mayhem. Yeah, okay, Outlaws and Mayhem. Oh, yeah. So a lot of strong teams, top teams in this one. And I really want to make Hawaii because I I want to get that travel experience in for um our younger guys and just to kind oh, of sure. feel because I haven't done it for so long. I want to get that feeling again and just. Uh, make it to that land, uh, see what it's about. And then, you know, we're locked in for playoffs and grand finals from that point on. So I have really high expectations for this one, for sure. Uh, okay. This last stretch. Mara, what are you, th- what are you looking at for towards the end of the season? For me, it's the same as space. It's 4-0, but I want every single series we play is a 3-0. If it's a 3-1, there's always room for improvement. Okay. So, yeah. Okay. And I assume you've got your aspirations on the the actual championship at the end of the year. That's what people were expecting you to do right at the beginning. How far away do you feel like you guys are from being a championship team? From being like a a genuinely good enough to be able to lift a trophy? It's getting closer. It's very, it's very, it's very very close. It's a very small gap. You know what I mean? I think our, I think our matches show that it's a very small gap. Because if you look, coming up to stage one, to be a tier one. Mm -hmm. You look at stage one, stage two, and stage three, every single series that we lose or like, Every regular season we lose, it's a, there's like the small improvement. Right. And yeah. I hope that this time, instead of making small improvement, we'll make like a big improvement together as a whole group. Okay. Yeah. It definitely, yeah. it, 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 I'm not saying it's going to be easy. It's going to be a lot of hard work and a lot mm-hmm. of like us staying locked in throughout this whole entire month and, and making sure that we don't le- leave any rock unturned because we don't want it to bite us and have like another 3 2 map because obviously yeah. those are not yeah. going in our favor. We need to get the three O's and make it convincing. And and really, I want to have a stage where it's like, okay, like I know we were the best and that it didn't come close. You know what oh, I mean? Yeah. Uh, so that's just the mentality right now. And I think a lot of the guys are, are feeling that right now, especially after the way we, we just lost this last one. They don't want it to come close again. You know what I mean? Yeah. For sure. Uh, all right. 
Appreciate you talking with us. Thank you. It's been an absolute thank you pleasure. Thank you. A pleasure. Thanks for and good luck this, moving yeah. forward <laughs> as well. I hope the uh, I hope the hero pools don't fucking boom you. I don't know what they would yeah. be to, in order to <laughs> boom you, but uh, that's that's always that's always just a little sprinkling of RNG to throw in there at the end of the season that people love. I don't want to see more sim. No more. Please, no more. <laughs> no, sim. no more sim, please. Okay, okay. Yep. I mean, that please. potentially could. I don't even know how they're being selected. Is no, it by some algorithm no, or something? No. I have Probably. no idea. God knows. Yeah. Maybe they'll get a cat to do it again or something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, we've got we've got some more uh, sick episodes coming out. We've got episode 96 coming up on Tuesday of the main channel. We've got more back chat episodes are going to be coming at you as well. I'm not exactly sure who we've got as the next week's guest, but we'll uh, we'll grab somebody important as well. Um, and we have a, a special episode that we just recorded earlier today, which will be going out later on. We'll still have to figure out when to post that. But a like, cool beginning of a new series with a special guest. We'll Ooh. be hinting at that over on oh. the at Platchat Podcast Twitter at some point in the future. So all that remains for me to thank you again. I really do appreciate you coming on. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank, thank you, you guys. for having appreciate us. It. Thanks. Thanks.